If you are listening to this right now, then you are probably very serious about building generational wealth. It's not just a fantasy or an idea that you have. It's something that you really, really want to do. You've already watched all of the previous videos and you got to this point. If you have it and this is a happy accident, well then enjoy and definitely go back and watch the previous videos. Now, my name is Georgie. I uh, found this financially savvy page called Financialism and uh, we talk all things, uh, personal finance and building wealth. So one thing that I want you guys to do in this video is uh, a little bit of math. So this is about the debt payoff section of your generational wealth journey. Now, there is this kind of stereotype about debt that it is evil, it is bad, and uh, both spiritually and mathematically, mathem mathematically, don't do math, don't do drugs of any kind. You will never reach generational wealth doing drugs. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, debt is this big bad wolf. Now, you can have debt in a good way. For example, some people take debt out on purpose and, or they borrow money because they can make more money with it. That's a lot of real estate investors. They will borrow off the money of their, basically, their real estate. Uh, you can also do this with the stock market, um, especially uh, before this uh, record high inflation. Well, not record. It's been, it's been like this before, about uh, four decades ago. But uh, people were able to borrow from their stock portfolio without selling a single stock and then they were able to use that money on their business to generate even more money or maybe buy more stocks now we are so far away from that when it comes to where we're talking about in this video we are still on that debt payoff journey but i just wanted to show you guys some examples of how debt could be an amazing tool if you know how to use it uh remember uh one one kind of philosophy to think about is creditism so we're kind of living in this capitalistic nation but most most money is virtual and i'm not talking about crypto i'm talking about uh currency right uh currency as in a uh, fiat currency the dollar most of it is virtual it is a digital dollar you don't actually print the dollar bills that get distributed across the population that's something else uh, but that's that's already 103 type stuff we are just focusing on debt now your mission your mission is going to be to look at the past 60 days. Oh, okay, you left, you left, you left, you left. If you stayed, don't forget to like this video. We need at least 40 likes to show me that uh, the work that I'm putting in is actually reaching people who care about it and will take action. So uh, I want you to comment below. I am taking action. I'm looking at my last 60 days of spending. Yes, you're actually going to value yourself and sit down for an hour. It's probably going to take you like 20 minutes. And you're going to look at all of your statements over the last 60 days. Where did your money go? Now, I'm going to tell you where it went. For most of you watching this, a large chunk of your money disintegrated into the chaos of going out to eat. Uh, I had a friend, uh, his name is Ernesto, and he loves when I share his story, and I love sharing his story because he was my first kind of trophy story because he listened to what I had to say. He's someone who uh, comes from a really... Uh, I would say, well, he's he's from where I'm from, basically, and uh, we're not all millionaires out here. So Ernesto was $20,000 into the hole. He was in debt, and we went through all of his spending, and he realized him and his wife were eating $1,000 a month. Now, some of you are like, only 1000 I eat like $3,000. i am just kidding. I don't know how much I eat because I need to do the 60-day challenge. Um, so this is your, it's actually a 20-minute challenge, but it's about the last 60 days. Ernesto realized how much he was eating out, and he cut it down so intensely, but he still valued that experience of going out with his son, uh, who was uh, about, I think, three or four years old at the time, and he wanted to show him the world. So here's what he did, and his son had so much fun. He would go to Costco, and they would get all the free samples and just dine out with that and that you never know what you're going to get it's an adventure it has a randomness to it and you're bonding with your kid uh, that's frugality right it's not just the fact that he saved money it's that he had a rich 
experience. And now he knows when he goes to get that $7 Starbucks or whatever uh, wifey really enjoyed. And, and I'm not saying it's all on wifey. He really liked his Subway and he would get the chips and all that. Um, and it doesn't add up. It multiplies up because if you're paying interest for a bag of chips, that's terrible. So it took him about two years. He paid off about uh, $20,000 plus of debt. And uh, he saved, what's phase two, $1,000 for emergencies. Because all of you, everyone watching this, is going to have a $1,000 emergency. It might be two or three that add up to 1000 but you are going to use $1,000 this year on expected unexpected. Now, I'm not psychic, but I know with the uh, law of large numbers... In 365 days, there is going to be a $30 fix, a $50 fix. You're going to have someone, a plumber's going to come. Your tires are going to wear out. It's going to happen. $1,000. You need that in cash, despite the investing opportunities around you. Now, we're, we're not even there yet, first of all, but you might find an investing opportunity. You know, you cannot touch that thousand dollars you could put it may i wouldn't even put it in a high yield savings account you need it ready at a moment's notice i would probably even have it in cash in the house unless you are terrible with your fingers don't don't be stealing from yourself a lot of you are stealing from yourself a lot of the people ernesto he admitted he was stealing from himself from his child from the future and he's like wait i am a person who values the future i'm not stealing I'm, I'm making sure I'm given to the future and that's investing. So your homework assignment, once again, I will repeat, look at the last 60 days of your expenses. And I want you, if you are open to it, write it in the comments, write to me on Instagram, but I really hope you will comment below because I want everyone to see that they are not alone in making mistakes. That's what this journey is. This is why so many people don't want to start their generational wealth journey because they don't want to face their own mistakes. They don't want to see the parts of themselves that make them their greatest enemy. You have to look at the beast. Look straight at it. It's going to look a lot like you, but it's not you. It's just your behavior, and we can change that. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.